Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod with another episode of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I'm here today with Aaron Meyer. He's the assistant principal of Washington Middle School in Evansville, Indiana. Aaron, thanks for joining us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your school, the kind of students and families that you serve, and maybe a little bit about sort of the general instructional approach of uh, Washington. First, thanks, uh, Scott, for having uh, me on, and thanks for doing this, too. Uh, we were talking just before we got on about how I've used this as a resource um, through this and just kind of as a connecting tool to hear perspectives of other administrators and educators. A little bit about Washington Middle School. We have 400 students, 6th through 8th grade, so we're middle school. Uh, majority of our students are free and reduced lunch, so we have a pretty high poverty rate at our, at our school, but we have a really diverse community of learners. We're right by the University of Evansville, so we've got, we're really one of the more diverse uh, schools in the state of Indiana. Um, a little bit about our instructional approach. Uh, you'll, you'll quickly see why the pivot to this kind of distance learning has been difficult for us. We used uh, Kagan, which is a collaborative, uh, uh, way to do collaborative conversations and group work. Uh, we've got flexible seating in every classroom, so the students are seated in four-person pods. Uh, we use the gradual release of responsibility uh, for our primary instruction uh, kind of mode, um, and then a workshop model in our math and English classes to kind of break things out and do some remediation. We're a high growth, uh, lower achievement this time, but we're heading in the right direction. Aaron, that sounds like an awesome instructional model, one that I would be happy to have my kids participate in. Yeah, um, it, is fun. it can be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that pivot then, right? So here you have this highly collaborative, um, critical thinking oriented curriculum and an instructional approach, right? Yeah. And now all of a sudden you had to go to remote. So what did that look like for you all? I think after the shock and awe initially, <laughs> we uh, ra rallied the troops. Um, we have a really strong leadership team. Uh, so we immediately got, we used WebEx as our platform primarily um, and just got connected with our leadership team, started brainstorming ideas. We do have, we are blessed to have uh, a strong social emotional learning uh, component to our instruction as well. We've got two social workers and a school counselor at our school. So really worked initially on connecting to students, to parents um, through the use of our homerooms. All of our students stay in, the ho in their homeroom uh, for three years. So we just tried to have homeroom teachers and along with the school uh, social workers and counselors connect with uh, kids initially and just see if they were all right. That, that's what it was about uh, initially. Um, after that, we started to look at, okay, how do we rebuild kind of our instructional practices um, through, uh, through uh, just looking through uh, Google Classroom, uh, Google Slides, and uh, just var various uh, platforms that we have. We, we use News ELA and Exact Math to uh, get information and assignments out to students. Okay, so how have you been doing workshops and collaboration? What did that look like? Were you able to, or did you have to kind of walk away from that? Yeah, I think that was more more difficult, but we did use, there are some things we, we were able to do with the WebEx, so immediately, you know, you use software like this in one way. It's kind of a direct conversation and that kind of synchronous uh, instruction, and then we figured out how to do breakout of, chat uh, rooms with the students. Um, we started to get more creative with, with that type of thing. And we're starting to get into a little bit deeper, but we actually ended school pretty early. So I think that we've done more uh, investigation and uh, work on that headed into the new, the new school year. Um, we're assuming that at least we're, we're, go we're coming back on August 5th, but we're assuming that at least at some point this year we'll end up in remote instruction again. And we want to really be prepared to make that a uh, more robust uh, delivery. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, tell us a little bit about access. So how did you handle access for students and families that may not have had robust connections at home? Yeah, I think if I, I could 
talk about one challenge for us, it, it was that access. It really was. So we had kind of a potpourri approach to that as well, where we had uh, to, to go with some paper packets for students, just, just the reality that either they didn't have enough bandwidth to do some of the video conferencing, or they had too many kids in the house so that even if they had pretty decent internet uh, coverage, if three kids are connected at once, it certainly couldn't stand up to that. Uh, so we just had to get get more creative with that. We we did to have uh, a chance to uh, provide that. Some of the inter internet service providers, uh, after initially kind of balking at uh, you know some rationale for getting people connected, they started to offer the free internet for everybody. So we were our social workers and uh, council were really reaching out to people to see. You know what they could do to get them to get them connected because that that was the key and if not we did have the paper packets for them to pick up and it gave them the chance to at least you know maintain we kind of were in that mindset that spring was about not losing a lot of ground it wasn't about like we usually are making that growth but it was about like hey let's not lose the, a year's worth of construction right now because they just are checked out Let's keep them engaged. Let's keep them doing something, even if it's fun. We did a lot of fun stuff too, just to keep them that that mental health and the social emotional learning component going, so that if they're at home, they wouldn't uh, you know feel isolated and we wouldn't be starting over in some ways on that stuff too. Right. So, Aaron, I I, I know that you didn't just make the distinction between learning and fun, right? So. <laughs> No, definitely not. <laughs> Sometimes the the remote instruction, though, I think because it's so different, you know, it, again, using that part of your brain when it's so new, yep. you can just raise that tension and anxiety. And even if it's, uh, it could be fun because it's so new that that novelty of it creates an anxiety in some kids that can keep them from enjoying it like they would later. So, you know, just to introduce, we tried to stick with programs that they had already mm -hmm. used, um, things that they had already seen and didn't try to do a whole lot new because it, it, you know, can overwhelm a kid so that they're not even checking in and you lose that connection then. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, uh, what, what were some uh, interesting things that you saw with teachers and students this past spring? So I think the, the, the most fun thing, I'm, I'm going to start saying fun every time since I, I got called out on that, um, was the kids getting able to, being able to see the per personalities of teachers and even of the administrators, you know, uh, you get a little buttoned up uh, in the school sometimes. And if you're, you know, coming from your uh, home like this or your office where you are, uh, you just see a different side of a person's personality. Mm -hmm. um, we, we try to do a bunch of just again, culture building things like a talent show. We did an incredible kid day where each staff member took a kid and said something amazing about them. Uh, art show, just to just things that again open kids up in ways that we had never done before. I think it's the, the nice thing about it is those are things we could easily do again. Sometimes there's not time in a day to do those types of things or to schedule them out, um, or even if we do it at school putting it online, we had a lot of parents who were really happy and thankful. They don't have the time to come in because they're working jobs or two jobs, but they get a chance to see that stuff and it right. helps them connect with the school in a different way too. So it kind of opened our eyes uh, to that as well. Yeah, well, and I think you bring up a good point here, which is that in many ways, the learning and teaching process became a lot more transparent this past spring everywhere, yeah. right? Because- no, no parents really had to mediate a lot of those interactions. Um, so what have you heard from parents? What, 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 what have they been saying to you, uh, particularly over the summer as you plan for next year? Yeah, we got good feedback with the amount of communication. Like our wins were in communication and just the openness that they knew we were out there, knew we were reaching out. The challenges uh, for the end of the year and going into the next year are helping the parents with the the technology they're kind of in the same they're, they're way behind even where the kids are so most of the kids have that um, understanding of google classroom or you know the different programs but when the parents are trying to help them out with it 
or to check in and make sure they're doing the work, the right. kid will say, oh yeah, I got it. I got it done. No, no problem. And then the parents are like, oh, it's, and then when we call, we're like, we haven't done any of that. Uh, they're like, what? And you know, right. so kind of walking them through like, here's how you know they've, they've done it. Here's what it looks like. Cause it's just different than when we were growing up where you had the paper and it, you could look at it visually and see that it was done. Like you right. have to be able to have some understanding of the mechanism of how, how it works. And we also pushed on teachers a lot. Uh, that was a, an area we focused on was giving kids feedback so that they could see that, that feedback and they could tell parents that, Hey, look at the feedback that the teacher is giving your kid, even if it's, you know, simplifying it for them where it's an email, um, summarizing what, what they've done that, that, that helped seem to help out quite a bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. So you said that you're, you know, like everybody else, you're making plans over the summer for next year. What do those conversations look like within the district and at your school? <laughs> we, again, I think we're back to the shock and awe uh, stage. Um, it's hard to say since I don't know if where, where we'll be in a month. I think everybody's just going almost week to week at this point. Right. Um, but we're going to be back in the building. The plan right now is to be back in the building August 5th when we start. So we're really trying, we're, we're really working with our leadership team right now to see where everyone's going to be most comfortable. Uh, kids will be required to have masks in the hallways, but not in the classrooms. We will have to be uh, socially distanced. So we're just trying to see our, our, our big ideas right now are to kind of minimize the movement uh, so that they are mm -hmm. moving as little as possible or potentially to start out again in that homeroom structure and have uh, just kids in their homerooms and do the sort of virtual instruction with a teacher present. So those are our two kind of competing ideas right now. We were just at the beginning stages of the planning. We had a, a, a meeting with our leadership team, got some feedback from them. We're gonna meet again kind of in the coming weeks and see where they're feeling and see where the you know, statistics are headed, to, to be honest. but. Uh, you know, we've got those those two things and, and the bottom line is what's going to make the teachers feel most comfortable and safe and what's going to keep the kids safe. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, Aaron, talk to me for a minute about some things that you saw this spring, like maybe your virtual talent show or Celebrate Kids Day or whatever you called it. Yeah, um, Kids Day. And um, some things that you saw this spring that you hope will carry forward into the fall regardless of what the modality is i, I mean we had the, uh, several teachers who have gotten really into just look investigating the blended you know blending their their classroom so they're using modern classroom as the platform there's some coaching mm -hmm. there's a coaching component and, and mm -hmm. a course that goes along with that so we have a, a teacher that's doing that we had several teachers uh, it was called uh, Rapid transition to online learning. They had a free course out. Had uh, quite a few teachers utilize that. I think it just gives it has just upped our technology. I mean, it's you hear it all the time where hey, if you want to learn a foreign language, go to that country and live there for six weeks. Well, if you want to learn online education, <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't want a pandemic, but certainly getting dropped into a situation where you have to do it for X number of weeks has just raised everyone's level to you know astronomically they, they, it forces you to ask questions um, you come up against that reality you have to troubleshoot things um, you know developing our, our uh, tiered system for social emotional uh, mm -hmm. learning was you know had didn't really have a mechanism for that for online learning and so we worked on kind of a check and connect uh, type situation for the students online even um, and I think those things can carry forward because we're going to have snow days and, and other times. It's just going to make those times when we are out so much more fruitful. They were, I think, at times not uh, losses, but they were um, not as robust as they're going to be in the future. Teachers know what to do, and it's just going to going to help them expand. Hopefully, I mean that's a, that's a goal for our school always is to have students carrying their learning outside of the classroom, outside of the school day. This just gives you opportunities and mechanisms. And I think that connection with the parents has, has, uh, is another huge win. And just that, that feeling that it's okay to open up to them uh, and to put yourself out there a little bit and that the, the, they're going to respond positively to that. That was, a, that was a nice to see. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So 
uh, Aaron, you know, this is a leadership conversation. So give me a couple key leadership decisions that you all made that seem to have worked really well for you or are working well for you. <laughs> yeah, I, th I mean, uh, give a shout out to our principal, Michelle Branson, to I think one of the things she did initially uh, was, again, putting herself out there on the morning announcements. I think that that keeping that consistency uh, something, a, a little like totem for each day. Hey, I'm going to do this every day. Um, one of the things that she's so good about that I, that I try to do is again, um, get in the habit of doing things on, on a daily basis. So connecting, um, we did a lot of little staff connection things. We're big on that. That's part of the being at Kagan school is about, um, mirroring as administrators what we're expecting the teachers to do. So we're doing uh, little activities to connect to the teachers and help the teachers connect to one another as well. And I think that going forward, keeping that on the front burner because that became such a priority as we all scattered across, but it can still be an, an, and will be an important component when we're, we're coming back now because we're still facing a lot of the uh, mental health challenges that have come along with all of this uh, and I think we're going to need those connections even if we're in the school because we might be separated in the school not seeing each other every day so even though we'll be in physically the same building we might not be seeing each other like we normally did and even if we do we're going to be six feet apart so trying to find ways to keep uh, teachers connected keeping them positive and keeping their spirits up they have such a tough job uh, so just focusing on that as an administrator is, is a real key for me going forward. Got it. Cool. We're kind of at the end of our time here. Anything else you want to share? Something we didn't talk about or? No, I, I, that was, that was uh, about all I had. And just again, thank you for, for doing this. I appreciate it. Uh, be lis listening uh, in the future. I'm, I'm interested to see what, how everyone else is, is opening because I, I do feel like uh, that's going to be a real challenge. And I just am, I'm worried now about two separate competing things. You know, I'm worried about the, the people eventually coming back and getting sick and really worried that going forward, students are going to start falling deeply behind and missing that opportunity. I tell parents all the time, they've got, they get one shot at this at middle school, one shot at sixth grade when it launches. And this is their chance at it. I want them to be able to make the most of it. So we're going to do our best to do that. Um, but we're going to need lots of good ideas even this year. So uh, I'll be on, on the lookout for e even more as the year uh, starts up again. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Aaron. Washington Middle School, everybody. Evansville, Indiana, they're doing great things. And uh, Aaron, appreciate your time today. Thanks. All right. Thanks so much.